about how at Pitch and Perfect we try and involve communities in the way we work and the way we design places. Um, I've got a huge amount of stuff that I wanted to get through, so it's all on this piece of paper. Um, so we're a creative studio based in Glasgow, and the top three of us, me, Mark and Deli, set it up about four years ago. Um, and since then we've added Jassy, Anna, I think, I think it's here somewhere, and, uh, and Duncan to the team. Um, so the last four years have really been about like reviewing, discussing and finding what it is we're trying to do. And the only thing that's never changed is that we wanted to put people and communities at the heart of everything we do. Um, so what's going to flash up is just a bunch of images about our, our work, just going through that at the back. Um, so Sarah asked me to discuss how we involve people. I thought I'd also squeeze in a few more people. Why? Why we do that? Um, and how, we, how participatory design processes give a lot to us. So this is our approach. We've designed this thing, this diagram that says, you know, we do research, participation and design. And if you're only involving one of them, you're kind of doing it wrong. It has to be all three tied together, but the very least two of them. Um, and it allows us to have some really, really serious fun. Um, so we do this by installing temporary cinemas. We've done uh, visual briefs for key projects. Um, we developed outdoor banquets uh, in Venice and we're about to do one in Glasgow um, and as well as designing public realm spaces and actual buildings um, which we will eventually get around to. Um, we've always used workshops and events to engage everyone in the community, bringing together people, young people, local businesses alongside designers and decision makers to really kind of have those important conversations about the past, present and potential futures of uh, built environments. So we collaborate with other designers, artists and creative practitioners, which helps us bring imagination to life and really encourage community involvement in the design and development of public realm spaces, whether they be temporary or permanent, and also into their local built assets. So this is a project we did on libraries across Scotland, which we've now touched, I think it's 10 libraries over two years. Um, so participatory design processes play a really important role in the creation of inspiring places. Uh, Well-delivered participation can have a huge impact on actual social capital. Um, as engagement becomes more involved and empowering, the rewards grow and individuals take ownership of their environments. Um, through things like temporary visual events and these sort of workshops, we invite communities to develop their existing relationships and build new relationships within the physical context of projects, uh, presenting the built environment in unexpected ways. So this is a cinema on the banks of the River Clyde which makes, certainly makes me think differently about that space every time I go past it, and I hope it affected some other people similarly. Um, so we set out with a really strong commitment to engage communities who are sometimes excluded from design processes, and it's vital to us that these ideas are repeatable and transportable to each and every community, whether that be Drum Chapel, Venice, or Wester Hales. Um, so the fun and kind of theatrical ways of bringing people together allows us to initiate conversations, create meaningful dialogues and empower people to put their views across. Um, we do a lot of these kind of milestone events, so throughout projects, and that helps us keep the motivation going. Architecture and the built environment, it takes a long time to, to, to make change. So keeping people involved and supporting projects. Um, I mean, this sort of thing may look you know, a bit silly, kind of throw away, but actually it's really serious and very important fun. Um, so they're, they're, in, they're created to, to build momentum and a body of work that supports the final aims of each and every project. Um, people used to ask us all the time um, why we worked this way instead of doing traditional architecture, and I think they meant in the kind of builds buildings kind of a way. Um, and the answer is always that bringing people and designers together creates amazing things. The social structures we work in are absolutely fascinating, and mostly people are only too willing to share their thoughts opinions, their gripes, and their ideas and knowledge with us um, when you ask them. So imagination and craft help people um, visualise the issues and using bespoke toolkits like these um, aid their involvement in projects um, with an aspiration to explore the possibilities of co-created design solutions. This brings people, clients and place together and helps with better communities for everyone. Um, so this sort of participatory experience and workshops are designed, as I said, to encourage discussion, building catalogues of conversation and creating opportunities for new learning. Um, so this is people learning how to map digitally. This is mapping actually in Syria from Glasgow, because that's where these gentlemen are from. Um, so that was learning on both sides. Um, so we trained in architecture, and we've always kind of aspired to do something useful. Um, this, this has meant working with communities to solve problems. 
and render the languages of urban design and architecture accessible to the variety of people we come into contact with. Without people to experience it, architecture is just buildings and the built environment remains unanimated. And this distinction, distinction is, behind the, is the ethos behind our process and all of our outputs, whether they're strictly architectural or not. Um, our work is about making sure that the city's nervous systems, those comprised of the built environment and the people, work together to create better places. Um, engaging people in change and helping to create successful environments um, is, is kind of involves the ongoing consideration of individuals within communities and figuring out with them how they'll use spaces and take the opportunities of new environments. Designing in this context makes the ordinary kind of a bit extraordinary and allows us to play uh, with popular themes of alternative urban practice. So that's, you know, the politics of community, the ludic dimensions of architecture, the celebration of the architecture of everyday life and investigating different ways of seeing and mapping. Um, these tools we use include a lot of collaboration, a lot of storytelling, and a lot of working with people directly um, within, with an understanding of the context to help us develop and deliver socially rich outcomes. We believe in being generous with our time, always, and being generous in the way we communicate so that people really have a chance to engage with us and not just hear us talk at them like you are today. Um, and we try and build a practice that encompasses architecture, develops engaging experiences, builds lasting relationships, and brings communities together. <laughs>